Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, 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 g'day, curd nerds. Welcome back to Ask the Cheese Man. This is episode 185, and you're probably wondering, where, what happened to 183 and 4? Um, they were during the 12 Hours of Cheese live stream, uh, unnumbered, of course. So it's like an actor that doesn't get mentioned during a movie. Poor buggers. Anyway, thank you all for turning up today, and thank you for watching uh, big shout out today, as we always do, to new YouTube members or renewing YouTube members. Uh, California Jones, thank you very much, mate. Henry Dickerson, uh, Alan uh, Cleeter, I think that's how you say it, or Cleeter, and Jay Nielsen, thank you very much for your financial support. Uh, and new patrons over on Patreon, we've got Jacobus uh, Schreidem, I think that's how you pronounce it, and Stephanie. Thank you to all the financial members of the channel that uh, keep the lights on here uh, in uh, in our studio, or oh, multiple studios now, which is absolutely fantastic. Okay, um, so videos that are coming up, we've got uh, White Stilton is what I'm working on. Oh, sorry, it's White Stilton with apricots. I should say that, yes, uh, because Kim wanted me to... Um, replicated cheese that she bought uh so i made a white stilton with apricots and that's in the cheese fridge at the moment also got a sal giorgi which is a uh, a portuguese cheese from the azores uh it's made exclusively there i think it's aoc but my, this is my take on it anyway and i've had some disappointment recently the truffle bears or the Camembert with truffle that I was making failed to grow white mold. So I'm going to show the video anyway. Uh, I don't think it was the truffle's fault. I might have had some penicillium candidum that uh, just wasn't viable. I was using a sachet that was about a year old. So not much I can do about that, unfortunately. Uh, but we'll see how we go. Um, so uh, some big news, lots of people um, asking questions and stuff and saying g'day. We'll get to you in a second, and thanks so much. But big announcement, as always, um, we, I, we, me and Kim, I have released the uh, my second book. So Keep Calm and Make More Cheese. You may have seen the video that came out a little while ago. Um, so it was a labor of love over what three years it took me to write the thing. Pandemics kind of get in the way, you wouldn't think so, but they did. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, let's have a look at where you can pick it up if you really want to. Uh, here we go, let's have a look. Okay, so on the screen, that's not how we want it, we want it like that. Alrighty, so we got it over at Teespring, so that link is in the description down below. I've also managed this week to get it up on Amazon, so it's available on Amazon for Kindles uh, and whatever else you want to do it. It's all the same price point, it's $24.95 US dollars, uh, and that'll convert to your local currency. We've also got it over on Apple iBooks, uh, so if you've got an Apple device and you've got the book app, then you can go there as well. We've also got it over on, oh, what the heck is that? We've also got it on Barnes & Noble. <laughs> there you go, for their uh, their Nook device, it's called. But yeah, you can get it on Barnes & Noble if you really want to. Uh, and that's a few places that you can pick it up, but it's at most good ebook retailers. Uh, so you can pick that up. So it's called Keep Calm and Make More Cheese. So that's what I worked on last week instead of the uh, the live stream. So it's great fun. Um, and uh, as, um, uh, where, where are we? We're, 
When did I see something funny from Jason? Jason says, up next, keep calm and make even more cheese. Well, you know, <clears throat> funny you should say that, Jason. I haven't started it yet, but um, uh, there will be a third book. I guarantee it. Because as I make new recipes and learn more myself, we will keep uh, going and going and going uh, and putting them together and putting them in a new book. But now, one thing I forgot to mention uh, is that I, for those who like paper, and who doesn't sometimes, it's good to sit down with a good physical book. Um, I am working on a print-on-demand version with Amazon at the moment. I've got to go through some formatting and all that sort of stuff. Not sure what the price point will be because Amazon take a huge cut of the profit um <clears throat> when you price a book over nine dollars 99 uh so i've got to figure out what the cost is going to be it, it'll help me figure it out but um yeah let's uh let, I'll, I'll take a few weeks to work on that i've got to work on the book cover for it i've got to work on the the manuscript and design it so it looks nice um and go from there i've actually had an offer of help from somebody one of my uh viewers so i'll have a look at that he said he's a book designer so that can't hurt can it so that'll be good um okay let's get on with the show so i'm sure there's some questions or some g'days we can say and we will have a poll on the minute as well uh big g'day to uh who's the first person uh let's have a look uh oscar g'day oscar g'day heather uh g'day brug G'day, Patricia, as always. Uh, G'day, Charlie. G'day, Apollo H7, something. Gary T. Uh, Wendy PJ. We got Kim, who's moderating, of course. Thank you, Kim, for getting up on your Sunday morning and foregoing your sleep in. Uh, we got Dominic. G'day, mate. How are you? I uh, got a question from Patricia. We'll get to that in a sec. Uh, Jason. G'day, Jason. Um, Mr. Sh. <laughs> okay um we got uh is that kai jones is that california jones maybe not i don't know townsteading g'day how are you dylan david joe judy g'day judy we've got real lifestyles we got um loft no lo lo lot 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 fee i can't even say it Char uh, Charlie mentioned you already. Uh, Robert and Cheese Therapy, great to see you guys on board. Uh, Sam and Helen. Uh, where else? Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, that's about everybody. Uh, Monique, g'day, Monique, in lockdown there in Sydney. Sorry about that, mate. Uh, Paul and uh, Fred. Hello, Fred, how are you? Uh, it's good to see Fred, a fellow YouTuber. Um, I actually watched some of Fred's first live stream last night at uh, midnight, my time. Very, I was weary. Couldn't understand a word of it, Fred, but uh, thanks, mate. I really appreciate it. And you took my um, my advice. And I, I thought there were so many people on there. It was excellent. I don't know why you did, hesitated and it was the first one, but it's really good. Great. I'm very pleased for you, mate. All righty. Um, okay. Um, and we've got a few others. Uh, three Voyages Homestead, Robert, Alan, uh, uh, Kelly, uh, Carol. Carol, I haven't seen you for ages. Um, Chris and uh, Bug with a Hat and Sarcast and Chris. That's it. There we go. Um, all right, we've got some questions in here. Let's, what time is it? We've got 10 past. Oh, don't forget at uh, 30 minutes past the hour, we've got the gallery, and I do have that all queued up. Um, I'll make sure that's still here. Let's have a look. Yes, we're all good to go with the gallery. Excellent. Um, so let's get into the questions. I'm sure we've got one somewhere. Where is it? So the first question is from Patricia. And she says, question, can you wax cheese for affinage if it has been cut into wedges or slices? I'd like to try aging some bits for one to five years, but I don't like the long-term effects of backpacking, uh, wet rind, for example. Uh, answer is yes. If you can do it with backpacking, you can do it with waxing, Patricia. 
Um, however, what I would do, though, uh, if you can get your hands on some of that uh, clear coat PVA coating that they put with uh, that's got mold inhibitor, uh, if you can get your hands on some of that, I would give your piece of cheese a uh, coat of that first. And that should stop any mold growth. And then wax it with yellow or, or red wax. Up to you. What color? Black. <laughs> so many colors. Um, and they all mean something. And it, I don't know. I think black is for aged cheese. And yellow is for young cheese. And red's for in the middle. Something like that. Light traffic lights, but different. Um, but yes, the answer is yes. So like I said, try and find some of that clear coat. Uh, I can't find a supplier in here in Australia, so that's a bit of a pain, but uh, you can try and find that. All righty. Uh, next question is uh, from Townsteading says, hello all, total beginner here. Uh, I've made some sherv and my first batch of feta, uh, which is brining in the fridge. Yep, that's fantastic. The first step is to make something. Uh, that's the beauty of cheese making. You can do, you can talk about it and read about it all you like, but until you start making it, you won't learn um, by your mistakes if you make some early up. Okay. Um, Dylan said that it's, he finally made it to a live. Well done, Dylan. Uh, let's have a look. This is from Joe, and Joe says, Hi, Gav. Uh, here is my first cheese ever, Camembert. It has a thick skin. Is this usual? It is creamy and delicious. Uh, yes, sometimes. Camembert is very finicky uh, or any white mold cheese. If you ripen it at too high a temperature, it goes real runny, like water just about, uh, due to the proteolysis, the accelerated breakdown of the proteins by the starter culture. Uh, if you mature it at a lower temperature, like below seven degrees Celsius, you'll find that the pace remains a little bit more stable and you get a gooier, I suppose, uh, paste, which is really nice. Um, but a thick skin, yeah, that's fine. It's just over overzealous penicillium candidum. It kind of does that. Okay. Um, uh, Townsteading says, have so many questions for all you cheese whizzes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and uh, Real Real Styles 11 says, I love your channel. Thank you very much. Hugs and kisses to you. Um, uh, where is it? Uh, Charlie has given me my first book review. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, Gavin, I got your new book the other day. It looks great. Thank you very much, Charlie. Um, the only problem that I found with uh, Teespring where I first launched it is that there are no reviews. You can't review a product, which is pretty ordinary because just about everywhere else you can buy a product, you can review it. So I would love to have some feedback um, on the book, whether people enjoyed it. Or I know all the recipes are all fairly basic, but it's all the other, um, the preamble and the troubleshooting. And hopefully the troubleshooting guide in the book is is helpful. But thank you, Charlie, for that uh, kind comment about the book. Um, there's a question from Jason says, with simple uh, paneer, uh, paneer spelled P-E-E, -E, no, P-A-N-E-E-R, paneer. Yeah, it's Indian cottage cheese. Is it possible to thing, do things like lay in caramelized garlic and herbs just before pressing? Uh, if so, do I just let it sit for a day in the fridge? Caroline is going to uh, pressing. Oh, yeah, you press it under the um, thing. Oh, yeah, you could because it's a fairly fresh cheese, Jason. Uh, you can put herbs. Don't forget to put a bit of salt with it as well. Give it a bit of flavor. But, yeah, because you eat it within a week, yeah, there's no harm in that. Uh, if you're going to age it longer, um by using uh, the caramelized garlic there is a slight chance of um what is it botulism uh but that's in longer age cheese that's why they don't really use fresh garlic they use granulated garlic and a lot of cheeses that have garlic in them like my uh second cotswold recipe that that worked 
really, really well. Um, but yeah, give it a go. Um, cheese therapy says that's great news. Need to get this book. Indeed. Thank you very much, Sam. You'll enjoy it. I'm sure. Um, Patricia says, um, I haven't noticed the Maltese cheese baskets on the little green workshops website and wondered why, uh, cause I was working on the book, Patricia. I didn't have time to do any products last week. That's the only reason. So I will get the, I can't even pronounce it. Uh, Quell, Quelleb, I think that's how you say it. So I do have some in stock, but I just haven't put the product listing up on the website. So my sincere apologies, Patricia, but I will get onto that uh, today. I should be able to snap a quick photograph of the little things and um, put the listing up. So apologies again. Um, Judy says that the new book is great. Awesome work. Uh, thank you very much, Judy. Appreciate it and appreciate you buying it. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Townsteading said, has anybody turned a mini fridge into a cheese cave? If so, do you have any tips for setting it up? Uh, indeed. So, Kimmy, if you're there, hopefully um, you've had a look, see, look at this comment. Um, can you put the video up about um, my cheese fridge or something, how I did that with the external thermostat, uh, and that'll help Townsteading uh, out there. Okay. Um, where are we? Uh, this is from Paul, and Paul says, Hi, Gavin. Good luck with your new book. Thank you, mate. Um, I have some meso culture that expired in October 2020. Is it still usable? It's been in the freezer the whole time and is still dry and looks fine. Uh, Paul, I would give it a, a go. Uh, I've been using cultures that have been at least a year, sometimes even two. Uh, probably not so much moulds. Moulds are a little bit more finicky, as I've just found out, unfortunately. Um, but uh, definitely uh, starter cultures like thermophilic and mesophilic cultures, uh, as long as they're still in powder form and still uh, free-flowing, then you should be fine. Um, I've used them for quite a while after their best before date. It's not a use-by date, it's a best before date. So, um, yep, go for it. Um However, if you find the cheese tastes uh, funky and not so good, then good chance it may have been a starter culture. Anyway, um, question from Real Styles 11. I'm making a Yorkshire cheese with cranberries right now. Uh, I'll post my video on my cooking channel I'm starting. Excellent. That's fantastic news. Another cheese channel. I love cheese channels. Uh, in fact, and thank you, Real Styles, for that little tip there. Um, straight after this live stream today, we are going to have a, uh, what are we having? Oh, we've got a premiere. What am I doing? My brain's not working. Having a premiere. Um, I did an interview with, uh, Julia from a new YouTube channel called Cheese History. And she's got a few channel, a few uh, videos up there at the moment around the history of cheese. It's fascinating. Um, and, uh, she's, She's a lovely character, and we have a chat for about 44 minutes. So if you want to catch that, we've got a premiere um, straight after this, so at uh, 9 o'clock my time or whatever the next hour is. Um, so that will be fantastic. Um, so we can do that. Uh, and, yeah, all new cheese-making YouTube channels. I love to promote them because the more cheese, the better, I reckon. Okay. Um, no, that's we've already done that one. Sorry. Jason says, um, I had offered my services with editing as well. Thank you very much, Jason. I did appreciate that offer. Um, but this is, uh, I think this guy is specifically a designer uh, to make it look pretty. So I've got all the editing's all done. I'm happy with the content in the book. But thank you very much for your kind offer, mate. Okay. Okay. Um, uh people these days be yep okay um are you and kim okay by the way i heard late last night that sydney is leveraging the army to enforce lockdowns there uh fortunately we live in victoria 
which is a different state than Sydney. Sydney's in New South Wales, which is to the north of us. I'm pointing upwards. I don't know why. Uh, but it's to the north of us. And there uh, they've had a major COVID outbreak in the Sydney metropolitan area of the Delta strain. And it's a little bit out of control. Uh, we recently had a, it was about a 10 day lockdown here in Melbourne where we, well, fingers crossed, have eradicated the Delta strain uh, in our state down here. They went hard and went early, unlike New South Wales, unfortunately, where they lingered a little bit too much and it kind of got away from them. Uh, yes, they probably will be using the army to enforce lockdowns because apparently people don't seem to care about lockdowns in um, in that state. It's nothing against people in New South Wales. Got a lot of friends that live there and a lot of viewers that live there. And I really feel for them, but, you know, I won't go any further. I'm not into politics on this channel. Anyway, um, getting on with some more questions. I'm looking. Robert says, um, I'm currently making Cotswold. I hope it turns out well. So do I, Robert, because uh, hopefully you're using the second recipe because there's two on the channel. There's one really early one back in the day, back in my early YouTube career. Um, the second Cotswold is the best of them, um, a better starter culture, and it also has the addition of granulated garlic. And I really prefer it because it's um, it's got a lot more flavour. In, in my uh, humble opinion, I really enjoyed that version better. All right. Um, let's have a look. Looking for the next question down in the chitty chat. Uh, Nigel says, a very good evening from the UK. I hope it's not too late for you, mate. And we've got K Norse. G'day from a French in Canada and Canada. Canada. I'm a dag. Uh, Canada. <laughs> mate, how are you? Um, uh, Carol, who moved a while ago, this new place is keeping me busy, renovating and gardening. No rest for the weary. Good on you, Carol. I hope you got some time to fit in some. Um, uh, some cheese making there. Uh, Townsteading says, also looking for some recommendations for my next uh, beginner cheese attempts. Uh, Sherv has gone well, and we'll see how feta turns out in about a month. Any suggestions for the next couple of cheeses? Uh, yeah, indeed. Um, so what you can do, Townsteading, is Kim is going to just put up a link, hopefully, Kim, for beginner's cheeses, you can make without a cheese fridge. Uh, so there's a whole bunch. Now, the next one I would try, uh, if I was you, and just a recommendation, is halloumi, which is a Cypriot frying cheese. Uh, it is absolutely delicious. I've got a couple of recipes for halloumi on the channel. So, Kim, just pick whichever one you get stumble upon first. And if you could put the link up for Townsteading. But try halloumi. It is delicious fried in a little bit of olive oil. It is amazing. Um, uh, Fred, Fred says, midnight for the wind. Uh, thanks for your appearance, Gavin. No problems at all, mate. Happy to jump in there. Um, okay. Uh, Alan says, this is so wholesome. Indeed. I like to have a wholesome channel. Um, and we come in from uh, Bug with a Hat, says Bob Ross, but with cheese. Thank you. The great late Bob Ross. I don't even compare, honestly. He was a he was an amazing teacher as far as his happy little accidents go. I get happy little accidents, but with cheese and curds, but cool dude. All right, it's the hair that's I haven't got the hair for it. Anyway. Um What's this one? Robert says, I've been watching your live streams all in a row. Goodness me. Um, I'm up to number 106. Uh, you said that you bought a smoker. Did you ever smoke cheese with it? Uh, no, I never got around to it. Uh, life gets in the way, but that's a good idea for a video. Why not? Um, I've still got a piece of that uh, jalapeno, jalapeno cheddar left. Uh, smoked cheese. There is a very good video over on the Cheese 52 channel by Lisa uh, where she did a comparison of smoking cheese um, and she smoked cheese 
before she aged it and she smoked cheese after she aged it. Uh, and she, um, she actually preferred the cheese uh, that she smoked before she aged it. So that was a bit of a shock to me because I thought that smoking cheese uh, happened after you age it. So she seemed to do, she did both and they both worked, but she preferred the flavour of the before matured smoking one. So it had time to rest, I suppose. Anyway, uh, it is winter, so I should get on with that, really. Okay. Um... Uh, okay, so a question from <clears throat> Liana or Liana. Um, what do I do to raw milk to make Parmesan versus Romano? Uh, being that one is whole milk and the other is semi-skimmed milk. <clears throat> what do you do? Um, okay, so the only difference is uh, Parmesan has a lower fat content than Romano. Uh, Romano is, uses whole milk. So with whole milk and Romano, because it's aged uh, for a long time and it's heated during the, the cheese making process uh, to about 48 or 50 degrees Celsius for both of these cheeses, it's fairly high, um, then you don't really have to do much to it because even uh, with the very strict food standards here in Australia, they do recommend that when you make cheese with raw milk that you age it for at least 60 days and it has to be aged at a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius or lower. Um, and with both those cheeses, oh, sorry, and the curd has to be cooked to 48 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit, um, but 48 degrees Celsius during the making process. So they both tick both boxes. So with raw milk, what we would have to do to make Parmesan is skim some of the cream off and it should have a fat content of about 2%. And you can go use that cream to make butter and what have you. Um, for Romano, you don't have to do anything. Just use the raw milk and get stuck into it. Um, you you would use less, um, less rennet, about 25% less rennet, and about 50% less starter culture as well because both those milks will have some native flora within them, some native lactic bacteria, and you don't want to... Um, overpower the senses especially with those two long age cheeses and they should turn out very nice just make sure that you brine them long enough uh, for the weight they are anyway i hope that helps um a bug with a hat says what's a cheese you actually don't like well those who watch the stream often would know the answer to this question it's processed cheese it's not really cheese it's got so many other things in there oh goodness me um, anyway, moving right along. <clears throat> um, uh, Kevin says, and hello, Kevin. Welcome on board. Packed my castle blue with clear wrap and it's going quite runny. Is this normal? Uh, funny you should say that, Kevin. I've got two castle blues that I don't dare open. They're in a ripening box and I forgot about them. I didn't wrap them in silver wrap. Uh, like I should have, and I dare say they're probably very runny as well. So, uh, yeah, that is normal. Look, um, you're just going to have to check for the individual ripeness. It's up to you how long you ripen it for. The ripening guides in my recipes are just that, a guide. So uh, depending on the circumstances, how warm it was, the humidity uh, will determine how runny it goes. Anyway, uh, it's now time for the gallery. Yeah. All righty. What am I doing here? Hang on. I just got to bring that back up. Rightio. So let's uh, bring up the gallery. There we go. There's some music that's copyright that I can't use. Um, okay. So the first cab off the rank is from, uh, hang on. I've got to bring up a little texty thing. Oh, no, there's no text on this one. This one is from um, uh, Hafiz. Hafiz, I think that's how you pronounce it. He's made a, uh, a Bel Paese and it's got a little bit of air. I don't think it's early blown. He said it didn't feel like a sponge, which is a sure sign that it's an early blown cheese. He said it tasted fantastic. So 
Um, it looks pretty good. It looks like Bel Paese to me, which means beautiful country in Italian. It's a white thermophilic cheese made with uh, cow's milk. So it's great looking cheese. I think the um, eyes may be from the starter culture. It may have had a gas producing culture within it. Uh, unless, of course, it's raw milk. Uh, and sometimes this happens. Uh, but it doesn't It doesn't look early blown. Uh, I think it looks fine. If it tasted okay and you're not dead, <laughs> then it's okay. Um, but there's the second shot. So that's the Bel Paese. Thank you, Hafiz. Uh, it looks fantastic. The next one we got is from Steph. Now, Steph sent me uh, a, an email as well. So here we go. Uh, it says, hi, Gavin. I am included... <laughs> I'll get that right. Hi, Gavin. I am enclosing a few photos of my recent cheeses. Uh, first in quite a few years. A couple seem to have developed questionable questionable moulds. So first of all, the Valencia-style goat's cheese didn't quite develop a the brain-like surface and develop some skin slip, but was delicious. Uh, I think that looks really nice. I don't think that's an issue at all. Um, let's have a look. Is there a second picture? There it is. There's the inside. That looks absolutely perfect. So for an ash-coated uh, white mold cheese, uh, Steph, I don't think there's any issues with that. I would be proud to serve that up on a cheese platter. No problems at all. So that looks fantastic. Okay, the next one is this is a large Costello-style cheese, which is a blue cheese uh, that... Um, where's that come from? Uh, Denmark. According to the recipe, it should be put in the kitchen fridge on the 6th of August. Okay. Uh, but it seems to be developing some serious looking molds. Uh, also think the interior is softening and coming away from the rind. Uh, in the cheese fridge at 10 degrees uh, Celsius, should I wash the rind with vinegar? No, I'd wrap this with, um, um, oh, what is it? Oh, aluminium foil, so a thick aluminium foil, not the thin uh, stuff you get for uh, kitchens, but a thick aluminium foil. You can get it from catering mobs, uh, catering stores and stuff like that. Uh, no, don't, never, with blue cheese, don't wash it with vinegar. It kills off the uh, penicillin rope 40 almost instantly. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it'll go all sorts of funky things. But that looks all right. Um, if you eventually scrape the mould off, that'll be fine. Uh, we've got a super chat. I'm not sure who that's from, but we'll get to that in a minute. Thank you so much for that super chat. I'll just kill the curd nerd light. Um, and the last, um, no, that's the same one. Here we go. This is what's this one? Camembert size uh, goats cheese made with old cultures, two years plus in the freezer. No penicillium candidum development, except for a few tufts after some. Quite some time. Tasted fine before the moulds appeared. I eventually threw them away because of the slimy spots and looked dangerous. I'm wondering if there was too much moisture, even though I used paper towel each time I turned them. Um, yeah, they. I, th I think the mould mustn't have been viable. It looked, looking inside the ripening box, it, it's really moist. So the mould, the, I think the uh, humidity is rather high. And yeah, those funny little black spots there don't quite look right. So I probably would have thrown them away as well. Um, but we, what you could have done is maybe washed them off. Um, and what you can do is actually make up a, a, a very weak brine solution with some penicillium candidum in them. And uh, uh, let me get rid of that. And there I am. Um, some penicillium candidum in there. Um, and um, uh, and spray it, mist it over the top of the um, the cheeses and, and turn them a couple of times, mist them again. And that kind of helps, I think, if you want to rescue it. Um, so, yeah, there's not much you can do about that. Anyway, thank you very much um, to everybody who sent in their pictures. Um, how do we send pictures to Gav? Let's have a look. Um, let me just do a incognito because that's how cool we can be here. Uh, where is it? There is Gav's channel. You'll find it in a minute and I'll show you 
how we do it. Rightio. So to send me a picture, and we didn't have many this week because I think I exhausted all the pictures everybody had during um, the uh, 12 hours of cheese, but this is how we send pictures to Gav. So if you go to um, my channel, and this is not logged on, uh, so you go to the, hopefully you can see my little pointer, the About tab here. Go down here and it says Details for Business Inquiries. Uh, sign in to see the email address. So when you're signed in using your Google account, uh, you will see the email address and that's where you can send me your photos. So no, I don't check any other email address. That's the only one. So go and send it to there if you've got some amazing pictures or not so amazing pictures and you want me to have a... Uh, a little bit of a diagnose on uh, from what I've experienced personally. But anyway, that would be fantastic. Okay, so let's kill that. Now, first of all, let's get to the super chat. Thank you, Wendy PJ. Uh, you got a question there, $10 Australian. Thank you so much. Um, it says, Gavin, I've noticed you're using flocculation point in recent times. Is this simply more precise method? And does it feature in the new book? Is there a table or something for different cheeses? Uh, indeed, Wendy. And uh, there is actually a whole video about it, including tables and everything. And yeah, it does feature in the new book. I did manage to fit that in there. Uh, and Kim, if you can put the link to the video about um, uh, flocculation and uh, how it helps, set a better curd, I think I called it or something like that. Um, but yeah, definitely flocculation and that'll help out Wendy. There's a whole video about it. It's tables in there and how you do it and all that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, that, it really does help when you've got milk that you're not sure about. It actually helps a lot of, um, not a lot, most um, artisan cheese and commercial cheese makers use flocculation point as a time for precise curd set for the style of cheese that they're making. And it makes a better cheese, if that makes sense. But anyway, thank you so much for your kind super chat, Wendy. All right, let's get back to some of the other questions. Um, Uh, um, ma, 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 ma. Sorry, I'm just scrolling back. It takes a while to get back again to where I was. Um, let's start. Let's start. Um, Goodness, so many questions. That's so cool. Um, right, there we go. All right, so packed runny, runny cheese. Um, there we go. Uh, Robert says, hi, Gavin. I'm trying, I'm going to try and make bel paese. Did you keep the temperature at 42 degrees Celsius? Did you have the milk pot on top of a steam pot? Yeah, I did. Um, however, you can use a sous vide or precision cooker these days. Um, heat your milk up. Yeah, you heat milk up in two steps for that recipe. Um, yeah, you can use a sous vide and that'll work. Um, 42 degrees is usually just out of the tap, uh, that water, if you're going to use a water bath. But yeah, for that recipe when I did make it, um, yeah, I did use a pot on a pot method uh, for heating the milk. So yeah, it worked no problems at all, Robert. Um, there's another question here from uh, Sarcast says, how to get harder, drier rind, let's say, on Parmesan, even if it's backpack and aged. Thank you. Okay, so what I normally do when I make a Parmesan style, I normally naturally age it and uh, wipe it with brine once a week, uh, a weak brine solution uh, once a week for about a month, sometimes two, depends on how hard it's going, how hard the rind's going. And if I'm starting to get some cracking, then I'll vacuum, vacuum pack it straight away. But if the rind's intact and you've got the humidity high enough, uh, then, yeah, age it for a, at least a month, maybe two, before you vacuum pack it so you can get a decent rind on it because Parmesan has a rind that's about that thick. You know, but mind you, the wheels are this big, right? Massive. When we're making them this big, they tend to dry out really fast. So do that. Uh, if you want to keep maintain the rind uh, for those hard Italian cheeses, what you can do is actually give it a coat of olive oil and that kind of keeps the... Um, it helps the rind to harden and it also prevents some of the mold from coming back. So take it for what it's worth. Oops, no, we did that. All righty. Um, 
Uh, Jason says, that makes sense about the garlic. Thank you. Uh, I'll have to try it sometime soon. Indeed. Give it a go, mate. Uh, Nigel says, hey, Gavin, have you ever made or heard of Harzer Kaiser? Uh, and it's a very interesting cheese from the Harz Mountains in Germany, flavoured with caraway seeds. Uh, I think Harz Kaiser is the same as, maybe different, to hand cheese or Handkass. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, it is an interesting cheese. I think I have a recipe somewhere. Uh, let me have a look. I've got many books, as you can see behind me. Uh, I will check. I will check for you, Nigel. Um, Kevin says, uh, I've been using my sous vide to keep milk warm and the cheese is turning out way better. I, I recommend getting one. Indeed, I, you can just walk away and not have to worry about temperature control. That's what I love about using a precision cooker. Um and uh, Kim, if you can put up the link to the uh, the sous vide, uh, I don't know how to spell it, but sous vide, uh, oh, there it is. Kevin's got it on the screen. Uh, sous vide video that I made. There's an Amazon link, an affiliate link, if anybody wants to use it to buy one. Um, and I get a small commission from that. So you're helping support the channel if you use the link. Uh, to get a sous vide. This, um, I think, Australian, US, and maybe Canadian uh, Amazon links or something like that. Anyway. Um, Real Style says, do I have a problem if I've made 23 pounds, <clears throat> what's that, 11 kilos, maybe 10 kilos of cheese in two months? No, nah, not at all. I make probably about that much cheese. I don't have a problem. Not much anyway. All righty. Um, very cool. Um, uh, Leanna says, uh, any time guidelines on time to age cheddar to get mild, sharp, or extra sharp? I also see different levels of lipase are available. What do you do or recommend? Okay. So for a mild cheddar, three months-ish. Uh, you may not even get the flavours develop at three months. But three to six months is mild. Six to 12 months is sharp. And extra sharp is anything over that. Um, so there you go. Uh, lipase. Yes, there are different strengths of lipase. So calf lipase is the mildest. Uh, kid lipase is the strongest. Uh, I think they're the two that are readily available. So calf lipase, I tend to use more often mainly because I can't get my hands on kid lipase, but uh, yeah, it's, I like it a lot milder. When you use lipase, it actually breaks the fats down and creates a piquant flavour. It's French. I don't know whether I present, pronounced it properly, but yeah. All righty. Um, time check. We've got 15 minutes left before the premiere. Uh, Charlie says, hello, Charlie. Hi, Gavin. Beginner cheesemaker here. What mould shapes do you recommend investing in for somebody who's only made fresh cheese up to this point? I've got a great video on that, Charlie. And Kim, I know I'm working you hard today, love. Uh, can you find the uh, cheese basket and hoops video for Charlie so he can um, have a look at that and look at my recommendations and what I use them for? So hopefully that'll help. I, look, honestly, there's one basket that I can't do without with all the different cheeses that I make, and that's the 165 millimetre basket that we sell on our shop. Um, just because I sell it doesn't mean I don't use it. I use it just about every cheese video. So it's about 6.5 inches in diameter across the top uh, and about the same in height, maybe a little bit higher. Uh, but it fits fine under the uh, spring cheese press that I use as well. Okay. Uh, Finka says, hello, Gavin and Kim from the Caribbean, new, new to your channel. Thank you and welcome. Um, uh, J Jason says, oh, I saw the premiere coming and now I definitely have to watch. Yes, it, it's a very good. And Fred says that very nice channel, the cheese history. I've learned a lot. Yeah, me too, Fred. Uh, a lot about cheese that I didn't know. So it's always good to know the history of something. Um, 
Uh, Vicky says, just bought the book. Can't wait to use it. I'm making Talagio tomorrow. Do you have a video on that? Unfortunately not. I haven't made Talagio. Uh, I have a recipe and I have a Talagio mould, a big square one, uh, or Talagio. I think it's Talagio. I'll have a look. Uh, but no, no video, unfortunately. Sorry, Vicky. Uh, you're going to have to wing it and uh, give it a go. Um, uh, where are we? Um, uh, Gurum, I think that's how you pronounce it. Sorry if I may muck that up. I just watched your Tilsit cheese video, and there are other unique mold cheeses out there. Indeed, there's lots of washed rind cheeses that are very smelly but absolutely beautiful. Lots feature in the new book. Uh, Brick Limburger Tilsit, um. Uh, Port Salou is another washed rind cheese. Uh, there's a few in there. Uh, they're very nice and very delicious. Okay. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Robert says, what culture is the closest to raw milk? I usually order from New England cheese, but can order from you. Oh, thank you, mate. I've noticed you have different cultures than they offer. I try to be broad in my culture offering. A lot of cheese culture going on here. Um, so the closest to raw milk is a culture called MA4000 series, or I think the one I've got in my store is MA4001. Uh, it's made by Denisco Choose It. Uh, and it it does create what's known as a farmhouse cheese, so a cheese made with raw milk. And I find that it really enhances the flavour of Cheddars, stir curd cheddars, um, any English style cheese uh, is absolutely fantastic with MA4000 series cheese uh, starter cultures. Really does add a different flavor than just using a simple mesophile with the two strains of bacteria in it. Good question. Um, Carol says that I'm only making feta and ricotta right now. It's hurricane season, hard cheese in October. All the best. Hope you get through it and don't get smacked with a hurricane over there, Carol. Um, question from David says, Gavin, what are your thoughts on using UV light in addition to or in lieu of vinegar and brine to control unwanted molds, bacteria, yeast, etc.? Very respectfully, David. Uh, not sure. I don't have any views or thoughts on using UV lighting. Um, I've never seen a cheese make a use uv lighting uh in their commercial operation so if it was good and good value then they would definitely use it but i've never seen it <clears throat> so uh i think uh uh using vinegar and even a, a weak bleach solution works perfectly fine so i think it's about 20 mils of bleach per two liters i'm not sure it's in my book i've forgotten i'm silly um, but yeah, a mild bleach solution is, is good as well. Okay. Um, what's this? Paul says, just bought your book. I will look it over later tonight. Thank you very much, Paul. Appreciate it. Uh, Joe says, I'm going to buy a Jersey cow. Uh, Gav, you have me hooked. I don't have a cow myself, uh, Joe, but it's a lot of hard work. I, I lived on a dairy. Um, when I was a young'un, uh, up until the age of 16, when I joined the Royal Australian Navy, uh, I couldn't wait to get out of there personally, uh, because I was sick of shoveling cow poo. Um, but yeah, that mind you, we had a, a herd of, um, uh, what was it? 70 to a hundred cows, I think. And we milked them twice a day or dad did anyway, dad and mum. And, uh, yeah, I was the, uh, the manure shoveler, <laughs> so much fun um, as a young teenager. You can imagine my grumpy face every time I had to go and do it. Uh, but, yeah, it's a lot of work. But, uh, yeah, look, the pleasures of owning a cow, or some people say it's the best thing they've ever did. So each to their own, you do you, Joe. Well done. Um, okay. Uh, Joseph says, hello, Gav. Hello. How are you? Uh, let's say, uh, Townsteading says, happy little cheese accidents. Indeed. 
just like Bob Ross, as we mentioned before. Um, ba -ba -ba. Carol says, uh, she's good news. She's found a source here for goat's milk and raw cow's milk. Cow's milk. Come on, October. That should be fantastic. A fantastic medium for making your cheese. Uh, we've got another super chat going down here. Let me just uh, kill the light. Um, it's just come up. Where is it? Down the bottom. Let's show this. $5 Canadian. Thank you so much, Cole. Uh, says, yo, what's the cheese man been up to these days? What's been happening, big man? Thank you very much. As I've mentioned before, just released my second book. Thank you so much, Cole, for your super chat. Um, all right, back to where we were. Doo -doo -doo. Um, question from Robert says, how can I find the flocculation multipliers? Uh, if they aren't listed in the article on your website, I've noticed that softer the cheese, the higher the multiplier. Uh, could I just be guessing on the type I want? Uh, yeah, the, in the um, there is an article on littlegreencheese.com uh, about flocculation, getting a better curd set. And yeah, there is a, a small table in there, but in the video itself, Robert, there is a larger table. Uh, and I might have put it into the... Um, I might have put the table into the, uh, the what's it called? The, goodness me. Uh, down below. Yeah. Description. That's the word. My goodness, my brain's not working. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. Next question is from... Da, 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 da. Uh, it's from Luke says, what cheese do you recommend uh, for a first cheese project? I think Kim's put up a link for the beginner's cheeses already. So I'd start with this. I'd go Pania, Ricotta, Halloumi, Feta, and then the world's your oyster. Go for it. Uh, there we go. Um, Bill says, uh, what does flipping the cheese whilst aging really do? Thanks. <clears throat> okay, so um, with hard cheeses, it's more important because they age longer. Uh, it prevents whey from seeping out because you're distributing the fats and proteins evenly as you turn them. Um, however, I was talking to a commercial cheese maker, not a commercial, an artisan cheese maker the other day. Deborah Allard, and she says that when she does her hard uh, cheeses, she rarely turns them uh, and she sells them at markets and all that sort of stuff. Never had any complaints. Um, so, yeah, so technically, it's if you're doing mold ripened cheeses, definitely you got to turn them once a day, especially for um, uh, white mold cheeses and blue mold cheeses because they stick to the cheese mat. And all the white mold gets ripped off if you don't turn them every day because they grow into the mat. So they're critical. Long age cheeses, not so much. Um, I do turn mine once a week. Uh, it's uh, cheese turning Friday, so I do that. And I don't have any problems. Uh, just When I walk past the cheese fridge, open it up, turn all the cheeses, bingo, boingo, you're all done. Takes two seconds. I just, Friday, turn day, that's what I do. All right. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. <clears throat> um uh Dwayne says, um, hello Gavin. Uh can black garlic go into homemade cheese? It's fermented garlic. Yeah, so that's cooked really long time, uh black garlic. It's a it's a unique flavor. Uh and yes, you could put it into um cheese because uh, if I remember rightly, it is heated up in the oven for a long time as well. I can't remember. I did watch a video about it once. Anyway, um, but yes, you can put that into cheese. Uh, you will have less chance of uh, getting botulism in the cheese. But uh, I have seen people use black garlic, but it's not it's not a common practice, if that makes sense. Okay, a uh, question from Townsteading again. Uh, have you tried making cheese with kefir instead of powdered cultures like the guy in the Art of Natural Cheese Making? Thoughts on that? Um, no, I haven't used kefir uh, grains uh, in any of my cheese making. 
because I find it really hard to get hold of raw milk. And David Asher ex uses exclusively uses raw milk in all his cheese making. Um, and I just can't get it. So kefir grains go well with raw milk. They help add in some of the cultures, geo and molds, geo and um, uh, some thermophilic cultures and a whole bunch of other good stuff, mesophiles and all sorts of funky cultures into your cheese. I haven't tried it. Can't get raw milk very often. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look. Um, yeah, Mr. Arlo, Arlio says, um, Townsteading, I made uh, Tomi uh, or Tome using kefir and ate it for four months with a natural rind. It was perfect. That sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, oh, we've got four minutes left. Kim's giving me the wind up. Sorry about that. And yeah, before we go, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. YouTube algorithm loves that kind of thing. No more questions, unfortunately. Um, if you want to support the channel, don't forget uh, that you can go over to Patreon or YouTube memberships down below in the description. And uh, if you want to pick up some merch, pop over to my Teespring store. You'll see the merch shelf on YouTube. On Facebook, not so much. But... Uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic, and you can pick up all your goodies down there, including the book. Uh, but like I said, it's available now at all good ebook retailers for your digital device. Um, thank you, everybody. We will finish the stream uh, very soon. But as I always say, thank you so much for watching today. Without your questions, there wouldn't be a show. It wouldn't be Ask the Cheese Man. It'd just be the Cheese Man waffling. That's what I would call it. Um, but thank you so much for all your questions. And for all the people that sent through um, all the super chats and uh, Townsteading, don't worry about the questions. That's what it's for. Keep on asking. If you don't ask, you'll never learn. Uh, but yeah, throw them my way every Sunday morning, my time or Saturday, wherever you are and uh, ask all the questions. Anyway, thanks very much. Oh, I'll get it right in a minute. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you want to pick up any supplies, don't forget you can pop over to littlegreenworkshops.com.au. We are shipping to limited countries during the COVID crisis and um, we will get it out to you. It does take some time internationally, even though we've only got Express selected. So it will take a few weeks due to all the flights that aren't happening. Anyway, thank you for watching Curd Nerds and I will see you next time. Bye.